build and sustain a school's community. School community and culture get a fair amount of attention, but often people struggle to understand exactly what it is. Um, so traditionally, school community has been centered on the building of character and the sense of school ethos steeped in respect, responsibility, and the building of a competent and kind citizenry. Often we see school announcements and school gatherings as a primary venue for building and supporting students. Um, so let's turn to U.S. pop culture for an example. And maybe you remember this scene uh, from Greece. Oops. A little too soon there, I'll just click it. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to what we're sure will be our greatest year in Bryden. Saturday night will be our first pep rally in Bonfire. And I want to see all of you students out there with plenty of support for Coach Calhoun and the Rydell Rangers. If you can't be an athlete, be an athletic supporter. And now for the really good news, and probably one of the most exciting things to ever happen at Rydell High. The National Bandstand Television Show has selected Rydell as a representative American high school and will do a live broadcast from our very own gym. It's our chance to show the entire nation what fine, bright, clean-cut, wholesome students we have here at Rydell. Attention seniors, before the merriment of commencement commences, I hope that your years with us here at Rydell High have prepared you for the challenges you face. Who knows, among you there may be a future Eleanor Roosevelt or a Rosemary Clooney. And among you young men, there may be a Joe DiMaggio, a President Eisenhower, or even a Vice President Nixon. But always you will have the glorious memories of Rydell High, Rydell forever. Bon voyage. <laughs> Okay, I'm sure we could all relate to that from our own school experiences and getting the announcements during the day. These are great scenes. So let's consider Principal Greta McGee's leadership move. She's flanked by a football, an American flag, and a needlepoint of school sweet school. She exudes a tone of formal morality and character building as she announces events, while also layering, her asp layering aspirational notes in her message. Um, Michael Fullen formalizes these ideas uh, with some other thoughts as well. According to Michael Fullen, school culture can be used to encompass all the attitudes, expected behaviors, and values that impact how a school operates. Then he states, a positive school community is conducive to professional and student satisfaction, morale, and effectiveness, as well as student and teacher learning, fulfillment, and well-being. And of course, the pandemic has placed more demands on school communities, but school leaders have found new ways to communicate, such as video. Leadership plays a huge role in, in layering the foundation for a successful school culture. And today we are talking to three people who are doing just that. And video is one of the tools they are using to implement in order to promote, promote uh, school and community. So let's welcome our guests. We have Kibby Kleinman, of a principal at Pinroll or Pinole uh, Valley High School in the Bay Area. We have Josh McLaughlin, Director of Whole Child Programming and Design at Urban Community Schools uh, around Cleveland. And Michelle Singh, CEO of LCTE Learning Solutions in Florida. So welcome everyone. Okay, before we get to the panelists though, let's hear from our audience, all right? got some questions for you. The first one in the chat, uh, what role do you play at your school in developing a positive school community? So what role do you play in doing that? It can be large, it can be small. What do you think? 
How do you develop positive school community? Write it in the chat. Let's see what you're all thinking. Supporting and listening to students. Nice. That's a huge part of this. And you'll see that come up again and again during this uh, presentation. Anybody else? In-person events. Right. I wonder how you did during pandemic. Knowing their situation, student support coach, power new students, greeting students, noticing their affect with a twinning projects. Interesting. Anything else? Okay, using culturally responsive curriculum and strategies, great. And student guide them in educational endeavors. Empathy, so true. Student clubs, advising, honoring their experiences. I love this. Okay, nice. You'll see some of these things come up in, as we get into our panelists. All right, Rob, you want to cue the poll? This one is, do you use video to build community? I still love all this stuff that's coming into chat. Do you use video to build community? Yes, no, haven't had an opportunity yet, but itching to know. What do you got? Okay. Every, I think should probably take two seconds to do. Rob, you want to show the results? Oh, look at that. Yes. And I'm really curious as to how. Maybe that'll show up as we're talking with our panelists. And itching to know is second. Good deal. And maybe the no's will be converts by the end of this. Great. Okay. And finally, the chat. What three elements, if you could pick three elements do you consider to be essential to build a positive educational community? What three elements build a positive educational community? What can you think? You probably listed in some of them already. Creativity, flexibility, consistency, approachability, Love these words popping up. Relationships, including listening and responding, trust, empathy, acceptance, student voice. Awesome. This is great. Inclusivity, relationships, time allocation and purpose, role modeling. Mm -hmm. Nice. Right on. Okay, excellent. Okay. Let's move on from that. Everyone, thank you so much for getting all those gears up in your mind, working a little bit around what all this means and what we're going to be looking for. Um, but now uh, let's think about how video itself is used as a tool to support school community. Okay, let's act like researchers and we're going to, I want you to find a pen and pencil, maybe a piece of paper too, maybe a back of an envelope, whatever you got available, because you're going to make some notes when we're going through these various videos from our, our panelists. So while you're going to get those pencils and pens out, I'm going to talk to Josh a bit. So Josh, I'm wondering yes. if you could tell me your story a bit. Uh, How did you start using video? Uh, I can do that, yes. Uh, so origin story for us starts sort of first full year of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, at Urban Community School, we brought about 70% of our kids back on campus, about 30% of our kids learned from home, but we made a, a decision that every Wednesday, every student would learn from home and every member of the instructional team would have the full day on Wednesday to um, engage in professional learning, uh, to plan and to recuperate. And so it was part of my job was to think about how do we craft uh, an engaging day of programming. How do we leverage some of our community partnerships to do that? Um, and so after a sort of planning period where we drew, uh, we used a lot of the feedback we gathered during the, the previous year, I had a, a differentiated program uh, involving a lot of our community partners that was gonna allow every kid to go through a day of programming in 30 minute intervals where they engage with community partners at topics like uh, mindfulness, exercise, yoga, coding, music, art. I was fairly happy about that program, but I had this lingering sense uh, that there was something missing, uh, some key ingredient and the days were taking away. And so just a few days before uh, we were about to launch this program, which we called Whole Child Wednesday, it occurred to me that the thing that was missing was that there was no opportunity to sort of involve the entire campus in a shared experience. Uh, you know, culture is a product of connection and connection in a time of pandemic is what is under 
threat. And so I, uh, I was a fan of the John Krasinski's online program, Some Good News. Some of you may be familiar with it. And I had a little bit of background in sort of in, in, in school TV. I used to do a show called Tiger TV, look it up, uh, Barrett Elementary School in Virginia. Um, so I was fairly confident that I could figure out how to create a, a program uh, live that could kick off every Whole Child Wednesday that will allow us to share some positive news, to have a, a collective laugh. Um, and I was familiar with Prezi because of my role in educational technology. And it just so happened that at the very moment when I needed uh, the best uh, doable solution to solve this particular problem, I encountered uh, Prezi video, uh, which was just the lean solution I needed. And basically allowed me to build a live program every Wednesday right from this desk and connect you know, with our you know, now 650 students at a distance. So I believe what you're going to see a little bit of, a, of today is a, is, a, is a little bit of that show, which we call UCS Good News, because we borrowed the concept from, from uh, Jack Krasinski. Yeah, that's, that's right. We have a clip here uh, to share with the group. And as we're watching, remember, let's write down the things that you're noticing and how Josh is building community. Josh, do you want to set up this clip anymore for us? Uh, let's see here. All I'll say is that um, I believe if, if this is a more recent clip. So when I started doing this program, it was a, it was a solo effort, uh, all from this desk. I now am fortunate enough to have a middle school production team that helps me uh, collect, uh, crowdsource the material and write the jokes. And so you may see a little bit of one of my uh, one of our star anchors, potentially Lucy, in this in this clip. And if not, she's in there uh, in the in the larger footage. Okay, great. Thanks. Good evening, even though it is very clearly the afternoon. Uh, yep. Uh, welcome to UCS Good News, UCS GM for short, of course. This is our weekly live broadcast where we highlight positive news stories from all over the school community. And this week, just like last week, we reached out to you and your presidents and your patriotic swag, and we asked you to share the good news. And the response is always the star spangled. We always say on the show that we get to share the good news, but you are the good news on behalf of myself, the entire UCS production team. We want to say thank you to everybody who shared a positive news story this week. All right, away we go. Now it's time for Positive Wolf House, where we take the time to share positive comments from UCS staff. We gave a shout out to our particular student. Oh, Mrs. Whitmer gives a shout out to Nevea L for real perseverance. Nevea was the first in class to build her model car without instructions. Miss Sharon gives a how to Lamontes for real perseverance. Lamontes was so excited to share uh, with Miss Sharon how he is back to keeping his assignments up to date. She's very proud of him. Uh, here's a help for Alicia R uh, for boundless respect. At after school tutoring, Alicia went to the restroom and noticed that someone had thrown paper towels around the floor. Without being asked, she cleaned up the area, threw away the mess that was left. It's time for some good news. February 22nd, or 2-22-22 was a palindrome, meaning it read the same forward and backward. It also fell on a Tuesday, which is why we referred to it as Tuesday. Uh, Second grader, uh, Ann Salise, was in the spirit for Tuesday. Her mom uh, had a homemade, or may homemade her a clever shirt. All the twos. Thank you for sharing. Room 218 was so excited to get back outside of the playground after so much snow and so much indoor recess. Uh, we have re-entered the Spider-Verse at UCS, which is always a good thing. Miss Allison's preschool class turned their dramatic play center into a post office recently. They are having fun taking orders, making cards for a friend, delivering a package or delivering packages. The production team says they've heard uh, that this group is a little faster than UCS Postal Services at the moment. That's the production team. I am not one to align the Postal Service, but I can tell you that these kids are really mailing it in here. Uh, it's a sight to behold in room 116. Lucas can read 50 sight words. Significant achievement there, Lucas. Here he is holding up a sight word chart. Congratulations. Tooth Fairy, of course, remained busy at Urban Community School this week. Uh, is there a donut dentist in the house? Uh, Layla lost her tooth eating a donut this morning, uh, and she is in kindergarten with Miss Monter. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Sophia C. lost her tooth while her cat looked on with mild disinterest. Very cat-like. Science time. Room 216 tested the scientific principles behind the sport of curling on a real live mini ice rink. That is some slippery science right there. 
Always nice to see our students developing their critical ranking skills. Thanks for sharing, guys. Uh, hot off the press is student reporters from room 215 are using their research and writing skills to produce a grade five newspaper. Here's the most recent issue. You can pick it up and read about the origin of Valentine's Day. Here are some of the reporters uh, comparing notes from the beat. Breaking news, Janali's uh, baby brother was born this week. Congratulations. All right, time for Creation Station. Students display creativity all over the school this week. Here's an example. In Stop Motion Academy last week, Jonas created a stop motion video using Play-Doh. It's called Flatten. We hope you like it. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> all right, that's awesome, Josh. Was it intimidating watching yourself a little bit? A little bit, yes, yes. <laughs> I apologize for the bad thoughts, but <laughs> thanks for your patience. Yeah, it's, it's so much fun to watch. Um, okay, panelists and audience, uh, so Kimby and Michelle and anybody else who wants to pipe in, uh, what did you notice about Josh's video? How did he build community? The thing that stood out for me was his humor, his his authenticity and the fact that he was, you know, he was being real, he was being himself. And that to me is a huge part of building community for your audience to see you as you are and accept you, uh, see the real you. Right. And I saw just a, a great opportunity to put so many faces on camera so that students in the school say, there I am and look forward to you know, many different ways that they can be caught out and uh, celebrated as well. That's that's awesome. So much stuff going on, right? Um, recognition of the individuals they're bringing up in the chat, excited use names of students along with pictures, drawing from their personal lives, really fun. I love also that he's showcasing student work um, of students, uh, their creativity as well as in science. Um, just really kind of fun, Josh. Um, how how long does it take you to produce one of those? I would say so. I've we've gotten in the habit of crowdsourcing the content. So as the show picked up a little bit of steam, uh, people got enthusiastic about sharing. So I send out a, a form an invitation to share early on in the week. Uh, I then share that um, that with my production team. What I do is I I basically take about an hour to build the skeletal structure of the show, but without filling in all of the quips. Uh, and then I have a, a weekly academy with four to five middle school students, uh, sixth or eighth grade every week, uh, where we sort of talk about the sequencing, uh, we write the taglines, we come up with uh, with jokes whenever possible. Uh, and then uh, and then typically we go live uh, about two o'clock every Thursday in the show, we try to keep it, you know, no longer than 15 minutes. So I'd say, you know, production time is probably about, you know, two, two to 2.5 hours for every episode. Well, that's not so bad, especially when you consider sort of like what editing would do if you just capture that and have to splice things together. That's pretty good. And it's a more leisurely pace than it used to be because I'm trying to make it a, you know, a learning opportunity for students when it when we were when I was really uh, um, uh, under a time crunch with whole child Wednesday I, I typically put the episode together in about an hour for uh, that the morning prior. Uh -huh. So the, the kids are writing this script then, right? They are helping them write the script. And what's been enjoyable about that is like, is to like, the, they have the uh, like authenticity piece is that they, it's not necessarily their style of humor, but they have picked up that like, that's sort of the, that's the presentation of the, of the, of the form. And so they have picked up some of the corniness, which has been nice. Yeah. So not all of the terrible jokes have to come from me now, which is nice. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. All right. We're going to, we're going to move on, Josh. We'll come back to you a little bit later. Okay. I love this though, it's really fun to see. Um, okay, Kibby, it's your turn. Um, I love your videos, Kibby. You have a ton on, on Prezi. Um, you're really making some nice moves in your videos that I think uh, get at school like values and that sort of thing. Um, and it should be interesting to see what the audience thinks. So Kibby, how did you start using video and why? Uh, very much like Josh, uh, inspired and really uh, forced into uh, coming up with an alternative means to get the news out during the pandemic. Uh, we had for years gone over the loudspeaker and, you know, intoned the various announcements and scholarships, activities, deadlines, celebrations that we have uh, always done, but that was no longer available to us. We had already shifted to presenting to the school 
the announcements via email in addition on the grounds that some classrooms were too noisy, some teachers weren't diligent about you know, letting kids hear the announcements. And that allowed us to do some things like highlight student art and visuals. Uh, Prezi all of a sudden you know, became a thing when a teacher told me and said, we need to keep that going. I mean, now more than ever, we need to maintain a sense of community at the school now that we're not in the same physical building because for a year and a half, we weren't and suggested that I take a look at that. And it put everything together. Now we could do all those intonations and all those news events and all those things happening and shout outs in addition to highlighting the visuals. So now the artist of the day didn't have to be somebody who you looked at on a piece of paper or online, but was right there in your face. So this was just a, a natural transition for us to say, let's shift the announcements from an audio and a reading standpoint to a more visual one. And to my surprise, when we came back to school, live really for the first time this August, the teacher said as a group, we need to maintain those video announcements. And the payoff there has been that, you know, this is now our, our one way to do it. We still send the written announcements out for parents and folks to access and kids to look at if the teacher doesn't queue up the video. But the video announcements go out to the whole school, which allows us to know that everybody's getting the same information. And uh, a spinoff benefit has been the fact that myself seen as the face of the announcements, I'm also now a source of information for everything. What time does the softball team leave? When did you say that scholarship is due? Uh, what did you say about what they're serving in the cafeteria? Often I forget the very things I announce. I'm like, did I say something about that? And they went, yeah, you know, you, you said that in the announcements, but it's great that kids now have a place to reach out and I can often direct them to folks they need to see. So that's kind of our, our you know, story in terms of how we went from, uh, um, you know, Greece to, you know, modern times. <laughs> right. And do you also send this out to parents, Kibby, or not yet? We send it to our PTSA and they tend to send it out as well on the on the weekly. These are done every day. This is a Monday through Friday. And so uh, in the morning, I wait till I get all the announcements. I have kind of a 7.30 or eight o'clock deadline and put them together and send it out so teachers can show second period. As a result, what you will see is one take theater here far more often than not. If I have a scratch, I scratch it. If I, I you know cough, I cough. Usually I'm, I'm under a deadline to say this has to get out to the teachers by 930 in the morning. So, um, you know, nose picking, everything, anything goes. Imperfection is, is okay in most cases, I think. Um, let's take a look at your video um, and, see, and see your approach. And so folks, when you're watching this one, think about maybe the values that are being expressed by Kibby when he talks to the student and the teachers, all right? Uh, okay. Spartans, announcements for Monday, February 28th. It is great to have you back. Now that you are here, we're telling you you're out of time. Well, not for everything, but a few things. The deadline today for the California Scholarship Federation or CSF happens. This is an awesome organization that allows you to build a great resume material as well. If you are a sophomore, junior, or senior who has had no Ds or Fs, you qualify. Go to Mr. Fertini and D208 today and get that complete it's the last chance to do it also for the Asian Youth Leadership Conference. This happens the week of spring break. You don't even have to get out of bed. It's going to be a virtual conference, but it's supposed to be great. We hear excellent reviews of it every year. Make sure you sign up for that. That is also a deadline today. And at lunchtime, we have Super Smash Brothers coming back to Mr. Datlag and the Esports Club. He's also interested in uh, a reprise of the uh, awesome teacher battle. All that detail available in an online survey you can take as well. The only shame in the news is not being curious about it. It's possible there's a lot of things happening that you may not know. We've got the solution. Newzella is the online news platform that we subscribe to that toggles between highest level reading and lowest level reading. But regardless, you will get the information you need. If you don't understand what's happening in the Ukraine, solve that today. Go to Newzella and find out everything there is to know. Progress reports are coming out this week. We are halfway through the third quarter. So that's the bell lap to tell you to pick it up for this last five weeks. The instructional leadership team will be meeting virtually. We'll be sending that invite out. If you're a department head and academy lead or interested in general school governance, love to have you there. That's today after school. If you are a Richmond resident, you have the opportunity to make money while you are right here at Pinole Valley High School. We're going to roll out details later this week, but be alert to the fact that there may be jobs out here, which you can do right from the comfort of your own school. Very excellent opportunity, including peer tutoring. That one I can tell you about. Interact, the service club is meeting today at lunchtime. Uh, we wanted to honor all of the black history work that went on this past month as we come to an end of it, and especially 
recognize the awesome work Ms. Lehman's and crew did with the Black History Jubilee. This is a snippet from Ms. Tremor's class who helped to contribute as everybody did. If you don't know what day it is, you may not know what month it is. You know it's time to get your Pinole Valley art calendar still 10 excellent months ahead. You have to buy it to see what March looks like. They're for sale in the cashier's office. We are going to treat March like the first month of summer. We're going to present to you summer programs each day of the month. And we strongly recommend you act on this. It may feel like summer's a long way away, but you could be hooked up with a great internship, paid position, a scholarship opportunity, uh, enrichment program. There's going to be a lot. March is also for masks. Do not forget, we're wearing them all the time until we hear otherwise. Schools are not exempt from the mask mandate. Make sure that you cover up. It's your job, not somebody else's, to enforce safety and good health. Jasmine Carranza Perez is our artist of the day. We want to really honor her work here. One of the things that highlights uh, especially is the, the process, the note-taking process. This is just a peek at her notebook in terms of what she does. And here's a little bit of a closer look. The detail includes color scheme. Uh, uh, you can see the inspiration of her thought process. She records different ways she might approach the work of art and plays with composition, zooms in and out of her subject like a photographer, her imagery and color choice, very current, very marketable. It's a close-up of some of what it is she does. Okay, <clears throat> nice nice work, Kibby. Um, so I'm curious with the folks, and you know, part of it is I'm wondering how intentional you are about the values that you bring, Kibby, to the, the stuff you're saying here. Do you think about that much or is it just so ingrained in you? That's a great question. I, I, I haven't thought of that before. I imagine, you know, it, it all ties together. It, it probably is ingrained in terms of this, but, you know, I do kind of have a mental Rolodex saying, what are the things that we've not talked about lately? Who are some folks we haven't highlighted? What are some aspects of school life that we've missed? So uh, my vision is to, to be, you know, inclusive and make sure that it's not just the sports highlights or, uh, you know, things for the most academically oriented kids. So I put, uh, you know, requests out among staff. And so the cafeteria will send me an update. The work experience person will, the counselors will. So often those things are just kind of baked into this. Great. I'm, I'm curious from our panelists, um, did you see, what sort of values did you see being um, brought up? or surfacing in Kibbe's piece. Did you see any, Josh and Michelle? I did. Uh, I mean, I was definitely a focus on uh, global literacy, the importance of that, a bit of a challenge embedded. And then I, I, uh, with the summer programming, I love that because that's the type of content that can so easily fall through the cracks, but also built into that as a sort of like emphasis on, you know, on uh, autonomy or self-regulation, uh, which, which I thought was pretty compelling. Great. Michelle? As far, yes. Yep. Um, I, I just I love the the highlights of the student work and 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 zooming in on the student work and and being able to elaborate and speak to the student work that adds value, uh, you know, that increases the confidence in the students as well, and it and it makes them um, I I feel it will make them more engaged in in the learning process because they can see how their work is valued on a higher level. Yeah, awesome, great comments, folks. Um, there's so many interesting things happening there, Kibby. You're you know, bringing up opportunities because you you really want to give them the resources, the opportunities, and the encouragement. That's really right there. Somebody pointed out in the chat the the idea of curiosity. Um, love that too. Uh, fostering that that awareness. Um, there's also a deep appreciation and inclusivity that we're seeing here. Um, really nice work, Kibby. I. I appreciate your work uh, tremendously. Okay, uh, we could spend more time on this, but we're gonna move on and we'll come back to uh, Kibby a little bit later. We're gonna come to Michelle. Now, Michelle, how did you start using Prezi Video and how have you been using video to build community with your work? All right, well, hello everyone. Um, I would say that my journey with Prezi began when I was a classroom teacher. That was a while ago, many, many moons ago. Um, I used the original Prezi and so did my students. Uh, I spent 15 years in the, in the school system here in uh, Miami, Florida. And, and most of the work that I do now though is with educators. So you can say I'm a teacher of teachers now. Um, that's, that's my primary focus. And um, I work with K through 12 educators. I provide professional development and coaching. So I help teachers understand their strengths, their opportunities for growth and their role within their school, which all ties back to community. 
when teachers understand, you know, the knowledge um, that they bring um, when they're aware of these things, they're really able to successfully contribute to the school community and ultimately the success of their students. When they understand, you know, what it takes for students to be successful, they can tap into community resources, whether it's the parents and the families or businesses or organizations, and they can create what all the student success team of stakeholders to really and truly um, support students. And so with that, Prezi is one of the tools that I always showcase uh, to the teachers that I, I work with, the teachers that I coach and the teachers that I support. I've used it to create various videos for various audiences from the, the students who I teach as a college professor as well to the teachers um, th that I support in my role. Um, I use it to share monthly updates with educators. And when they see those monthly updates, guess what? They take that and they provide monthly updates, monthly highlights uh, to their parents. So instead of sending home parent newsletters, get the parents get a Prezi monthly update video. Um, I also, you know, send uh, use videos for um, communicating with community organizations to let them know what's happening in the education community and educators are able to kind of use that structure as well and they send videos of what their students are doing or an upcoming project they have kind of like a pitch when they want the community support they may send it to a business who can give them funding or a business that could come in as a guest speaker and that's how they're using the video to get that community uh, support and, and build and build that um, culture and community in their school. Um, and of course, some of the things that um, that was already addressed where you know student work is being highlighted, but more so on the teacher level where the teachers are sharing with the administrators. So the, the administrators are now kind of not forced, I'm not gonna say forced, but they, uh, they're, they're empowered <laughs> to want to highlight what the students are doing and what the teachers are doing in their class because it's teachers are going out of their way to show them, hey, this is what my students are up to. Can we highlight to the whole school what they're up to, right? And so those are some of the things that I've done um, with, with Prezi video. Okay, awesome. So we're gonna take a look at your video now. Um, and can you set this up a little bit for us, uh, Michelle? What's the purpose and who's the audience? Oh, sure. So what we're gonna see, believe it or not, that was actually my first Prezi video. <laughs> it was my first time trying Prezi. Um, and, uh, so this was around, uh, you know, uh, folks are getting ready to go back to school right after the pandemic in 2020. And I had trained, I trained thousands of teachers, worked with them during the pandemic, and they all seem to have like the same kinds of questions and they had the same kind of struggles. So what I ended up doing was writing a book that was, um, that teachers could use to go back into that uncertainty of the school year with the tools and resources um, to guide them. And so this video that I created was, it was more like, um, um, you know, an overview so that teachers could see that this resource was available and these were the things that they could take away to help them as they went back into the, the school, the school year, the uncertainty of the new school year. Great. Okay. Um, so everyone think about how Michelle is building community while we watch this piece. Michelle Singh, and I'm here to talk to you about educational continuity during online learning and five ways teachers can achieve this continuity. To connect with me, you can reach me at SingNBCT on social media, or you can scan the QR codes to connect on Twitter and LinkedIn. If you'd like to download a note catcher for this presentation, scan the QR code or go to the bit.ly link on the screen. What is educational continuity? We are most familiar with this term now because of school closures. It is the framework for teaching and learning during distance learning as a result of school closures. It's the processes, procedures, decisions, and activities that we implement for teaching and learning during this time. And what does it take to achieve educational continuity? Well, it's the communication that we give, the collaboration we provide, the connection, content delivery, all of that will look different for our students during online learning. So how do we make changes to those systems so that we can help soften the negative academic, social, and emotional effects of online learning on our students? In addition, how can we as educators support our parents and families with consistent communication during online learning? 
we can achieve familial continuity with our parents and families when we streamline the information that we provide and the resources that we provide to our parents. We can streamline our communication with one platform so parents have a consistent place to look for information from teachers. We can share information, expectations, announcements, et cetera, weekly and not daily to prevent parents from being inundated with messages, especially if they have more than one child in their household. We can also offer how-to resources to give guidance and training, especially with technology, and even help information to parents so that they can help their child with their learning activities. These can be in the form of one-pagers or videos. We can explain the why by defining like the big picture so parents know the scope of what their children will learn and will do in their activities. And this could be even a simplified version of the objectives or learning standards where we provide I can statements which help the parents understand the expectations that their children have with the assignments. Okay, there we go. Um, so this piece uh, is a lot more serious than the other ones that we've seen, right? Partly because of the audience and the purpose. Um, and also, you know, you're not elevating students, you're rather talking directly to teachers. I think we're seeing more elements emerge for how video can build and sustain community. Audience, this is you in the chat, as well as the panelists, what do you think was going on there? I mean, this was a different flavor. What sort of building of community did you see? Need more skills and learning how to use the tool. Oh, I think that I think that was a Prezi comment. <laughs> Maybe Josh and Kibby, you could pipe in there. I wanted to just say that uh, I love lessons which come uh, uh, wrapped in another kind of lesson at the same time. And and what Michelle does here is while she is explaining ways that it can be communicated, she is using this communication tool. That's a, that's a great way to, to buy in. Both the content of what it is she's talking about and the presentation will work both so that it, it kind of reinforces the other. I, I think those are the very best kinds of lessons. Great. Yeah, I was gonna piggyback that same concept. I mean, you know, every interaction you have with the family or the community is you can reflect and reinforce the culture you want. Uh, and there she is talking about the importance of, of streamlining and then you've got streamlined and streamlining embedded uh, in the form, you know, with, with the note catcher at the start, for example, I thought was a nice example. So yeah, so yeah, really nice. Some nice handy things that you do as well as ways to connect. I like that a lot, uh, Michelle. Michelle, do you have anything else you wanna say about this video and how you're working on this stuff? Well, I just want to say that, like I said, this was my first video. And for me, it was not hard to put together as a first time or using Prezi. I had a PowerPoint, had the content, and I was, um, I, you know, I uploaded the PowerPoint or imported the PowerPoint. And Prezi was a much easier tool to use to put this together because it allowed me to pause and take a breath and think about what my next sentence was going to be and then record and pause and record and pause and record in between. Whereas at that time, nothing else um, gave me that option. So for me, Prezi was like the easiest tool to use for, for that purpose. Great. All right, folks. Uh, hey, Paul, may yes, I interject? Uh, yes. Thank you. Um, there's a great question from Lisa Kay, uh, best probably suited for Kibby and or Josh, but Michelle might have an opinion um, as well, which is, uh, the, the kind of the logistics of distributing videos school-wide, kind of how do you do it? Where do the videos live? So that um, it's more easy to access plus easy to do on, on the distributor's end. Uh, Kibi, you wanna take that one first? Sure, uh, you know, for me, what I do is uh, once I've recorded it, uh, I make sure I upload the video. I may watch like, you know, five seconds of it to say, yep, the audio and the uh, visual are working. I usually don't like watching it again myself. In fact, when I walk into classrooms and see it play, I'm always, you know, slightly, you know, disturbed to, to see me when I'm there live and kids don't know what to look at. Uh, so what I do is I make sure that's good. Just copy the link. Uh, send it to school all, uh, you know, Panola Valley all off it goes. And, you know, usually there's a little tagline that says, you know, uh, uh, you know, now featuring, you know, breakfast specials, you know, copy the link, put it there, and then people can just access it. They hit play, they click on the link and they play it. So that's, that's how it goes out. Uh, my process is I, I build it uh, with my students in the desktop 
uh, Prezi app. And then at two o'clock, uh, you it uh, there's an integration with Zoom. So you can go live on Prezi and then just choose the Prezi camera in Zoom. Uh, so, I, uh, so all of my teachers connect via a, uh, a Zoom link that I, I share to our all staff email. Uh, and then I record the Zoom and then edit it down because there's typically a little bit of chatter on the front and back ends. And then I make sure that that goes on um, the UCSGN uh, YouTube channel. And then I send it out via our uh, family newsletter every Wednesday. And I've actually have been talking to some of the uh, user experience designers at Prezi Video about uh, streaming on multiple platforms simultaneously, because I think that's like where we'd like to go next. I can I can tap, you know, I can comment here as well. Some of the teachers that I've worked with and some of the ways that I recommend um, sharing is having you know, one consistent place that the parents can go to. So some teachers may create a website. They may have, let's say like a OneNote that they share out with the teachers that the teachers have that link book. I'm sorry, the parents, they have that link bookmarked. And so they constantly add their content to it. And it, you know, it loads for the parents with the new content and they're easily able to just click on January's update. Here's the video and they watch the video. February's update goes in there, the video is there. They never have to get a new link or anything. They just go to that link that they bookmarked, whether it's a web page or a OneNote or, or whatever, and, and they're able to access all of the updates and videos as um, the teacher adds them. So that that's the way that some of the people that I've worked with have, have been able to share out those resources. Um, you know, uh, and again, it, it depends on the size of your school, the size of your audience. It just depends on how many people you need to get it out to um, uh, and the format that you want, you choose to use. So it could be website, it could be a Wakelet, it could be a OneNote. It, it's totally up to the teacher and um, what her, his or her parent audience prefers. What's the easiest way of getting it out? Great. Hey, Rob, do you have any other questions? Yeah, there's another good question by Carol W. about um, how could this be applied in an asynchronous class at university? Um, uh, I'll just start just as one idea is we, we see at the university level um, Prezi videos being used with their video management platforms like Panopto or Kaltura um, because they work very well with those, but also with their learning management systems via, via Canvas. And of course, in the more synchronous class, like you're seeing what Paul is doing here and everybody else, it can be used in your live Zoom classroom. But I don't know if you have any other thoughts, Paul. No, those are what I do. I also teach at the university, so does Michelle. Um, and um, mine was never asynchronous though. Mine was always synchronous, but it was definitely blended as well as online. Uh, but I can definitely see just using these videos as a way, the videos that you produce and folding them into your content very easily. Um, we have other webinars where we talk a little bit about the construction of videos. And uh, one thing that university folks often do is they create really long videos. And there's research that shows that you wanna have shorter videos, especially when it comes to instruction. Um, so, um, well, we're actually coming out with a, uh, uh, a infographic soon about the seven different qualities that go into that. Rob, hopefully it will go to, to more than, um, to, to people in mass a little bit more too. The only thing, the only other thing I'd add, Paul, is we've done a good amount of work with sort of flip video content in our middle school. And I could definitely see if you're, if you're accustomed to that, uh, you know, Prezi video would pair very nicely with a, with a tool like uh, Edpuzzle, for example, if you wanted to gather some formative assessment information, break the videos up, make it a little bit more interactive. That's a great point. And really quick, uh, so how I use it with my students as well, this is just one way. Um, you know, when the students do their assignments every week, they do their discussions and assignments, I always do like an intro to the module in video format, and I call out some of the things that they did well. And, and so that builds community for sure, because they're seeing me, they're hearing me, they know that I'm reading their work. <laughs> and so that, you know, that helps with the personalization and the connection as well. Yeah. Great points, both of you. Um, okay, Rob, is there any other questions you have in the queue? That looks like uh, them at the moment, thanks. Okay, um, so uh, I turn again to, to academics for this and um, 
Let's look at what the National Institute for Urban School Leaders at Harvard has to say about developing positive school community. This is a quote from them. So culture is nurtured through regular consistent communication in which the school beliefs and values are iterated. Definitely we have that culture is connection, right? Um, and in looking at this, as well as the research, as well as all your videos, as well as not just yours, but everybody else's too, that go into the public domain, I've come up with three things that you should really be aware of when you're building a community through video. One is the purpose, the other is the values that you're exuding in the video, and the relevancy of that content. And so I'm going to take apart each one of these just real quickly here. Now think of things that you might add to these, right? So uh, insofar as purpose, there's the announcing and sharing that we see. There's the affirming that's going on. There's clarifying, emphasizing, and the building of connections. Are there others that anybody would add to this in you know, the audience or panelists? Think of anything like that? Um, I would, so some something I would add, uh, and it, it may be kind of wrapped up in this for me, access is an important, is, is really important. And I feel videos provide access to our parents, our students, our, our community. Um, from you know, when when I think about access, I think about that multimodal piece, that multimodal communication. So you have you you hear it, you know, you can read the the the, the um, transcript as well. Um, you can see what's on the screen. Uh, so it has it, it can include visuals. So you have that multimodal communication, and where you're respecting and honoring um, the different learning styles and the diversities that your audience has. I gotcha. That's a great addition there, Michelle. Okay, let's go on then to values and things that I've been seeing a lot are this uh, establishing of trust and leadership presence within this, the connectedness of the environment and that the act of listening that you really have your thumb on what's going on. There's that knowledge that's being exuded. There's that reliability, the respect and sense of humor. I'm sure there's others too. If anybody has some thoughts, that would be awesome as well. Uh, you can just put them in the chat. I'm going to go on to the last one here, which is really on the relevancy thing. And this is the timely, timeliness of the information, those community contributions. That is so key, you know, calling in from your audience, even uh, in more formal ones like Michelle's. I've seen people call in uh, what I've heard from so and so or my colleague at blah, 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 bringing that content in and those references in is important. And then also insider need to know content and recommendations. Those are some things that make the content highly relevant and uh, more than just a list of bullet points on a piece of paper. Okay, um, so with that, I know we're coming close to the end, but I would uh, wonder if Josh and Michelle and Kibby might give us some tips for those that are transitioning to video uh, to help build community. Uh, yeah, I have. Well, I was thinking about this. One for me is, uh, and it worked for me, was don't let the best theoretical option be the enemy of the best doable option. I could have spent a lot of time thinking about, like, how do I put together the perfect uh, system to broadcast a program out to my community? But uh, Prezi had all the essential pieces. It was, it was intuitive. Uh, I could do it quickly and efficiently, and I could disseminate it in a fast way. And so it, I, I went with the, the best doable version of video. Uh, and if you're just getting started, you know, like, you know, you're seeing a lot of action on the screen, but you can really make a Prezi video with, with one slide, you know, one image and, and start there uh, just to get a taste of it. Agreed. I, I would say, you know, you're going to find your groove. Uh, I am the lowest tech guy probably here on this panel. I, I, you know, struggle to use all of the educational tools that exist. Uh, you know, I am from the, the last generation that will will be inept at, at doing these computer things and Prezi was and is that easy for me and you find which things make sense how long to hold a slide up, uh, uh, you know, a blend between clip art and live things and you know what have you what how your face fits in the screen there's so many templates to choose from, you know I've run through the gamut as well so this is a dynamic thing you know it will evolve occasionally there are new things added to it and it's always fun to you know, increase your skill set, but strongly recommended to, you know, technophobes who say, you know, it's hard to do. It's, it's not. Okay. Awesome. How about you, Michelle? And for me, 
Oh, yep, really quick. And you could see that I'm, I'm using the Prezi present here option and I've changed my background. Uh, the three things that I would say is um, access, connection and ease. So I like to think of it as acing my videos. <laughs> so access, as I mentioned, it's all about that multimodal connection. How are we providing opportunities for, uh, you know, to, to, to kind of honor the diversity of our audience, but not just that, making our uh, communication two way. So they watch the video, what next? How are they going to be able to communicate with you about what they've seen in the video, right? Um, also, connection, like you mentioned, so or we talked about so many times, it's about um, relationships, but I also want to point out that it's about our presence. What does our presence look like for our audience? How are we being present for them? And then, of course, ease. Ease is just how easy it is to use as a video creator, but also as a people, um, the audience watching the video. How easy is it? for them to access it, just to click on a link and access it. How easy is it for them to hear us and to be able to read the captions um, and just be engaged in the stories that we're telling them. So I like to think of those three things um, to ace my videos. I like that a lot. Okay, um, well, this concludes um, our, our session. Rob, do you want to talk a little bit about the Prezi Educator Community? I think there's a lot of questions about that. Um, coming through as well as any other uh, things you would like yes. to ask? Thank you, Paul um, and panelists. So uh, I just want to mention a couple things. I have some great questions in the chat uh, and in the, the questions directly to hosts and panelists. We really appreciate uh, the dynamism and, and the engagement. So there's a couple special offers that we made for webinar attendees. I want to make sure everybody uh, is aware of those and I'll drop some uh, uh, links in the uh, chat as well, but uh, I'll try to do it as I say it, if I can really multitask, but there is a 30-day complimentary EDU plus uh, upgrade offer for all attendees, and that addresses some of the things. One question was about video time limitations, and, and as you move up the uh, product licenses from the free up, up the line, you get longer video options. So that's one thing that everyone is eligible for. There is also a, our, our Prezi for Teams product um, is, uh, it's a license that's designed for schools, districts, organizations. It allows you to share content. That's what I'm talking about here. Uh, deeper analytics, you can manage multiple licenses for people, revoke licenses, exchange those. You can implement single sign-on. Um, that is a, a special offer that is designed for uh, teams of 10 or more people, and, and that link is in there as well. And then um, our education programs, and maybe I'll ask Tracy to pop this in because I didn't prep this list. Uh, oh, I, I put it on the screen. Thank you. That's our, uh, our we have a Prezi Educator Community which is uh, some dynamic Facebook and LinkedIn online private groups. We offer special events, special training, um, occasional fun things, and uh, you can join those uh, for free. Uh, the Prezi Certified Educator uh, program has two tracks, one for uh, educators, classroom educators typically, and one for uh, Prezi Certified Educator Trainers, which I think Michelle is. Um, one of our first. So those programs are both free. Um, you can submit time spent uh, and hopefully get continuing ed credits as we provide a certificate for those. Um, I think that's all I have, except for um, we do have a webinar survey that I would like to encourage everyone to um, complete. We really, we read every single comment and we really appreciate them. And to give you a little incentive, there will be, uh, I'll raffle off or choose or have a draw three uh, Prezi Video t-shirts. Uh, they're great t-shirts. They're kind of special. We have a, a limited edition. So if you want a, to put your name in the drawing for that, include your email, because that's of course essential for us to get back in touch. But regardless, we'd love the feedback on the webinar and we appreciate you attending and giving us your time. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks to our panelists, to Josh, uh, um, Michelle and um, Kibby. I hope you have a great day and fantastic work. And I know it's hard to watch yourself sometimes on video. Thanks for doing that for us and, and looking at it a little bit more closely. Thanks for having us, Paul. I'm going to go get a xylophone. <laughs> that would be fun to see.
Thank you all. That was fun. I think people trickling out. I'm going to go ahead and pause or stop the recording.